In 2019, 9.4 million people died in India, the equivalent of the entire population of Hungary or Israel. In this video, we will take a look at what the main causes of death were, and if there have been any health improvements in the last couple of decades. Here we see all the deaths that occurred in India in 2019. Every green marker here represents 10,000 deaths. Let's start with the largest group, aged 70 or older. Close to half of all deaths occur in this age cohort. The most common causes of death is like in all high and middle income nations, non-communicable diseases like ischemic heart disease, stroke and a variety of cancers. We mark non-communicable deaths in blue. We also see causes that increase with an improved healthcare and economy. Diabetes is the sixth most common cause of death in this age group and Alzheimer's and dementia is at number 9. These are among the causes that has increased the most, both in absolute numbers and as a share of the deaths. Together, close to 70% of all deaths are of non-communicable diseases, a share that goes up with increased lifespan and an improved healthcare system. But at the same time, we also see a couple of communicable diseases near the top. These deaths we mark in red. Lower respiratory infections is at number 5, and tuberculosis at number 8 and an indication that India still sees a great deal of poverty, unequally distributed across the nation. Diarrheal diseases is the third most common cause of death in the 70-year or older cohort. Of the accidental deaths marked in pink, false is the only significant one, at 3.5% in seventh place. Compared to 2005, the number of deaths late in life has gone up, but the population has also increased, so in accounting for that, the death rate has stayed the same. Among the diseases that has decreased the most in this age group, we find many communicable diseases like tetanus, HIV AIDS, rabies and malaria, as well as malnutritional diseases. But also the still large killers of tuberculosis and diarrheal diseases. The risk of dying in those decreased by between 30 and 40 percent between 2005 and 2019. At the other end of the scale, Alzheimer's has increased the most, followed by dengue fever and many types of cancer like pancreatic, ovarian, colon and rectum, breast and kidney. Before we move on to the younger groups, it is important to note that it is not always easy to pinpoint one exact cause of death. Often people die with several health issues that contribute, and different healthcare systems might diagnose the causes differently, geographically, with development and over time. This should especially be considered when examining a poorer nation, or a nation with poorer regions. The next group is the 50 to 69 year olds. Here we also see a higher number of deaths in 2019 than in 2005, but that can be explained with an increased population size. The death rate here has actually gone down. The composition of the death cases here is similar as in the older group, with non-communicable diseases at the top, with around 70% of the total deaths. Heart disease once again topped the list. Tuberculosis, diarrheal diseases and lower respiratory infections are the communicable diseases in the top 20, placed 4th, 5th and 9th. While falls is still the most common accidental cause of death here, road injuries and self-harm is more prevalent than among the older. Dengue fever is the disease where the risk has gone up the most from 2005 to 2019, but it is still a rare cause of death. The diseases with the greatest increase in risk are mainly cancers, with breast, colon, and rectum and a variety of lung cancers, the most common types with a significant increase. At the other end of the spectrum, the risk of dying of measles has decreased the most, but of the more common causes, HIV AIDS, diarrheal diseases and tuberculosis has decreased the most. Moving on to the by far largest age group of 15 to 49 year olds, we are down to 1.5 million deaths yearly a risk of dying that has gone down by 26% since 2005. 
Here we have a more mixed picture, and non-communicable diseases is down under 50% of the deaths, even though ischemic heart disease is still the most common one with 12%. Here the communicable diseases make up around a quarter of all deaths, with tuberculosis and diarrheal diseases in the top. Deaths associated with labor account for 2.6%, or 40,000 deaths. But the risk of dying in childbirth has closed to half since 2005. The risk of dying in HIV AIDS has reduced with more than 80% since 2005. In the remaining quarter we have deaths that are sorted under accidents, with drowning, animal-related deaths, violence and falls, making up sizable shares. But at number 4 on the total list for this age group, we find road injuries, at 125,000 deaths in 2019, 8% of the total. And in second place, with close to 150,000 deaths, or 9%, self-harm, suicide. Of the more common causes, the risk of dying from dengue fever and an assortment of cancers has increased the most. Previously mentioned HIV AIDS, maternal disorders and diarrheal diseases has decreased the most among the more common causes. Moving on to the luckily much smaller age group, we have 150,000 deaths in the 5 to 14 year old category. To be able to see smaller shares in these categories, we will zoom in and change to lighter green markers for every 1,000 deaths. In this age group, the population is almost exactly as large as in 2005, around 250 million but the number of yearly deaths has halved in just 14 years. The non-communicable diseases make up a smaller share of the deaths here, and the most common one is late cases of congenital birth defects, of course more common in the younger years in this cohort. Some cancers also make it into the top 20. The communicable diseases dominate, with typhoid and paratyphoid topping the list with close to 30,000 deaths in 2019, spreading with poor hygiene the disease is most common in urban environments with a high level of poverty. Diarrheal diseases follow, with lower respiratory infections and malaria after that. Among the accidental deaths, drowning is the most common cause, followed by road injuries and animal contact. The reduction in deaths from communicable diseases is remarkable in this age group. Measles has reduced by 94% from 11,000 deaths in 2005 to 600 in 2019. Tetanus is down from 1,000 deaths to 160. Diphtheria is almost eradicated from 400 deaths in 2005 to 20 in 2019. And among the more common causes, tuberculosis is down 67% and malaria 66%. The advances in malaria in these 14 years, in just this age group, in India, is saving 14,000 lives yearly. Deaths from drowning is down by half, same goes for rheumatic heart disease. Road injuries is down 40% from 11,000 to 6,700 deaths. Dengue fever is the only major killer that has gone up in this age group since 2005. Our second to last group is the 1 to 4 year olds, with 112,000 deaths in 2019. This is a reduction from 408,000 in 2005, a reduction if accounting for a slight drop in population levels with 70%. Communicable diseases dominate here, with lower respiratory infections at the top, ahead of diarrheal diseases, typhoid and whooping cough. Drownings top the accidental deaths, and congenital birth defects the non-communicable diseases. diphtheria, measles, tetanus and HIV AIDS, among other infectious diseases, are down by 80 and even 90% here. Diarrheal diseases and tuberculosis still account for 19,000 deaths combined, but they are down by close to 80% from 2005. No cause of death with more than 10 cases has increased in numbers since 2005. And we finish with a still large group, children not surviving their first year of life. 720,000 deaths were recorded in this group in 2019, down from 1.4 million in 2005. The risk of dying as a young baby in India has almost halved in these 14 years. Here we don't zoom in, but stay at 10,000 deaths per marker. Neonatal disorders dominate this age group completely, with 60% of the deaths, 430,000. Still, this is down by 40% since 2005. 
adding congenital birth defects, and we are up to 70%. Lower respiratory infections account for 15%, and diarrheal diseases 5%. Once again, we see large improvements with communicable viruses and bacteria, but even the main killers in this age group are down with 40 or 50% in just 14 years. Looking at these numbers, it is clear that the development in India has been fast in the last couple of decades, especially when it comes to child mortality. This has contributed to the average lifespan increasing in the last few years, to 70 years on average. But India is very clearly in the middle-income nation's dilemma, where communicable diseases still are prevalent and causes sickness and death, where rural areas and poorer states still lack basic healthcare access, and where vaccination coverage is not perfect but it also sees a growing need for expensive healthcare for an aging population, for expensive cancer and heart disease treatment, and investments in preventive measures to increase the number of people living past 60, 70 and 80 years. India also needs investments in road safety, swimming knowledge, workplace safety regulations, and an increased focus on mental health to reduce violence and suicide. With that said, the development in India is remarkable few other nations have seen improvements as fast as India has in the last few decades, and a growing economy will create further opportunities for a government to invest in accessible and advanced healthcare if they choose to do so. You can become a member on my channel to support my work further. Just press the join button down below. Thank you so much for watching.